just let us uh, close our eyes before the beautiful presence of the Lord. In tomorrow's uh, uh, gospel, you will hear what is happening right now. The gospel ends where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord, Father. So, does anyone have a doubt that God is present here or not? No doubts. <laughs> is anyone doubt? Please raise your hand. If no you doubts, have. Father. Those of you can see, I want to see your beautiful face. God created us in our image and likeness. Don't Amen. Um, when I see you, I see a reflection of God's beauty. Yes, thank you so much. Welcome, family. Yeah, now I can talk to people. Yes, now I can see people. So, my dear friends, uh, we thank God for this beautiful time. Every For all time and season belongs to God. Belong to God. And every time is the best time. God's, God's time. So, this is a night uh, prayer vigil where we are going to enjoy God's presence for a few moments, because where two or three people are gathered, there I am, the Lord says. So in this, even this virtual communion, God is there. God is truly present there. So we'll begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank and praise you for this beautiful cluster, galaxy of uh, uh, your beloved daughters and sons gathered from across the world, what if not for your love that binds us together as one force, one force against every evil forces in the world? If two people agree or not, it shall pass, come to pass, oh Lord. Here we are more than 40 people, more than 50 people together. What shall not come to pass to? if we agree upon together. Send forth your spirit, Lord, and make us a new, a new creation, a new beginning, a new love. <clears throat> we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So once again, uh, Hati, I'm so privileged to come and be with you. Um, this our session is not about a lot of reason and thoughts. It's about experience. I like to give the best example, best instance I can give it about myself. My experience I'd like to share. We just finished uh, uh, one full day filmmaking workshop at uh, St. Paul's Institute. We had a lot of uh, sisters, fathers, lay people, students, came together and uh, learned mm, some nuances of the film filmmaking. So since I am part of the college, I uh, initiated it and I went through the background work and all. So one comment one sister made, okay, at the end of the workshop, I'd like to share with you. Perhaps that can put us into perspective. How How good to receive um, a comment like this from a sister. She says, you, she addresses me, you cannot be contained in a system. You are a flowing river that nourishes all along the way. You cannot be contained in a system. You are a flowing river that nourishes all along the way. Can anyone uh, give uh, a parallel passage from the Bible for this 
this uh, little message of sister <coughs> any scripture that goes that has got some of the words here you are a flowing river that nourishes all along the way is it a scripture a thought what do you think when jesus says he is the living waters yes jesus says you are the living who said that uh What's your name? Swapna. 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 Let us put our hands together for Swapna. I am Amen. the water. Says. Please, Yay. if you are able, please. please take Psalm 1. Psalm 1. I also will take Psalm yes, 1. Brother. First Psalm. Psalm. What does it say? Yeah. Psalm. Psalm. One minute, Father. Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Yeah. Or take part that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. Yeah. But their delight is in the law of the Lord and yeah. on his law they meditate day and night. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Next. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither in all that they do, they prosper. Praise the Lord. Praise so we the Lord. Are like a plant, those who delight in the law of the Lord are those like planted by the streams of water. Amen. Which never fails to yield its fruit in season and never whose leaf does not wither. Okay. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Mm. Yes, Father. Uh, water from the temple. Mm. Ezekiel 47, I guess. <clears throat> Ezekiel 47. Yeah. Can someone else read Ezekiel 47? 47. Which verse, Father? Verse, I'll tell you. Uh, then he brought nine, me nine onwards. Okay. Say this one. Uh, um, eight onwards. Eight onwards. Ezekiel okay. 47, eight onwards. He said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arab Arba. And when it enters the sea, the sea of stagnant waters. The water will become fresh. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Then, whenever the river goes, wherever, every, wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live, yes. and there will be very many fish once these waters reach there. Yeah. It will become fresh, and everything will live where the river goes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise See, the Lord. now already we got three scripture references. Jesus saying, I am the living water. Okay, then we heard about Psalm 1 and Ezekiel 47. All that is referring to us is today, you and I can be the channels that carry the living water of the Lord. We are the channel that brings, the, while we Allow the Lord to flow through in and through us. We ourselves will become very lush and very, very uh, uh, fulfilled. But what happens many a time, we live who live in a virtual world or uh, in the world, we become a pond. What does a pond do? What is the difference between a pond and a river? River keeps moving, Father. It keeps flowing. But yes. pond, it pond, is pond is closed. Yes. Pond is closed. And it, it keeps water for itself. Yes. And uh, pond will gather only frogs, snakes, mm. or reptiles. Hardly any fish. It gather moss. But a river, there is no moss. River flows. It flows. It gathers all the nutrients from wherever it goes and flows. So we, likewise, 
or the first message that I want to give you today is we have to be a living water. We have, we know that beautiful song which goes, living water flow, sweep away my pain, bring your healing, bring your healing to my heart, help me, help me love once again. Yes, that is. So how many of us like to be a living water? All of us. All, all of us. All of us. You can be a living water. Okay, so uh, water not only gives life, it also purifies. So if Amen. you are know the saints already, anybody a saint here? Anybody? Saint Sapna, Saint Michelle, I can see. Saint Jyoti, Saint Rosalie, Nita. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any saint here? <laughs> of course, in Acts of the Apostles, Paul calls everyone saints, my saints. Okay. We are small, we are small as saints, Father. We are next, Pope Francis says, we are next door saints, middle class saints. Amen. So we are not at uh, saints. So we are also gather a lot of dust while we live here. Gather a lot of, you like it or not, Lot of stains come as we travel journey. Lot of stains come. So when the water passes through us, all the dirty also will be cleansed. We will be cleansed of all the dirty. We not only Man. give life, our dirtiness also will keep on being. We'll be hale and hearty when Jesus enters into us all the time. So allow Jesus to enter into your body. You will be a life-giving person. <laughs> That's the first message I like to give. The second message I like to give is uh, one spoke Francis <coughs> said, uh, I think in a, in this apostolic exhortation, Amoris Laetitia, he says, "Don't expect for a perfect husband in this life." So take heart, all you husbands. This is what Pope Francis says to all the wife. Don't expect for a perfect husband in this life. You will never get. And uh, to wives, to husbands also they say, now wives take take heart. No, Don't expect to get a perfect wife in this world. And I will add, don't expect a perfect priest in this world. So he says, you cannot find a perfect husband, wife, uh, priest, you know, mother, sister, no. But we are all, he says, we are all journeying towards perfection. Amen. The cross. We are all journeying towards perfection. Some may be on a, a highway, some may be on a slow way, some may be on a on a you know, service road, some may be coming through a bullock cart. Some may be on a BMW, but all of us are journeying towards perfection. So please never, never judge anyone. Never judge anyone. Because you are faster than the other. You don't go look back and you know, laugh at the person. That person may, may not, at the law, grace has not come to in full measure that God allows in particular time of a more industry, that person also will get in his. So since that, since you are in a better position, no way you can look down upon somebody. We are all journeying towards perfection. All of us one day will arrive in the presence of the Lord. So perfection is the no, next world, but we are all journeying towards perfection. That's the second message I'd like to draw here. Um, the third message what comes to my mind today <clears throat> is uh, don't despair. Don't despair. Well, whatever crisis may happen, whatever crisis may happen, it will happen, but never, never give up and despair. <clears throat> I like to tell a story here. Uh, it's a funny story. 
okay before that i got a message sms some time back which goes like that you may be able to cross oceans without wetting your legs you may be able to cross oceans without wetting your legs but you cannot cross the life the ocean of life without wetting your eyes there will be n number of you know uh, tidal waves of problems challenges coming coming to you don't give up so a story comes to my mind i told little children the other day there are two there were two uh, house flies friendly house flies one house fly name is jimmy another house fly name is johnny jimmy and johnny were very good house flies and uh, uh, and how not house wives but house flies okay. house flies the fly you know fly going around so they were so happy they were running around going around and bless you know into the uh, house the hall veranda courtyard as they were zooming in they found kitchen on their way so happy nice smell they're so happy jimmy and johnny were dancing and suddenly they saw a milk pot a milk pot and they were excited wow it looks so white and very beautiful and they wanted to take a plunge they zoom inside the milk pot that's all the both of them drowned inside and they were shocked oh my god where are we we are, we are, we are drowning we will we will be dying and jimmy started giving up i cannot i am so sorry i am going to die john is a no man come on you can try try your best don't give up and uh, they still again started trying but jimmy says i am so sorry i can't i can't i quit and he slowly drowned but johnny never gave up johnny started with all the more he started fluttering fluttering at the wings you know with unceasingly fluttering fluttering and suddenly a miracle happened because he kept on fluttering on the milk the milk started creating butter around the fly there was a butter there's a you know it became a butter on which it climbed and flew away there was joy <clears throat> this is a small story which gives us a big lesson we must never never give up in <laughs> come what trials may be whatever trials never give up our trust is in the lord the lord never gives up on us lord never gives up on us in a, a catechism of the catholic church i think yeah a uh, catechism of the catholic church it says with very comforting words for us okay or and i forget the number uh that like uh 9 ccc catechism of the catholic church 982 catechism of the catholic church 9 82 i am going to read out to you okay 982 of catechism of the catholic church there is no offense there is no offense however serious that the church cannot forgive there is no one however wicked or guilty who may not confidently hope for forgiveness provided his or her repentance is honest Christ who died for all men desires that is in this church the gates of forgiveness should be always be open to anyone 
who turns away from sin. Isn't it beautiful from the Catechism of the Catholic Church? There is no sin, however serious, that the church cannot forgive. Which means every sin that you can, you have committed, but if you if you repent in one second, it doesn't even take one second, God will forgive it forever. As a beautiful therapeutic value in a sacrament of confession. Therapeutic value. I like to highlight here more than your mortal sins, your venial sins are, our venial sins are very, very dangerous. Can anyone say why? More than our mortal sins, venial sins are very dangerous. Can anyone guess why? What is mortal sin? What is venial sin? Some people are saying, Father, we don't know what is sin. We are all saints in heaven. What does a mortal sin do? It affects our soul. Sorry? Yes. It affects our soul. Venial sin also affects our soul. Any sin affects our soul. Good. Good attempt. Anybody else? Uh, it takes us to hell. Mortal, mortal sin takes us to hell. Mortal it sin can lead us to damnation, Father. Yes, you are right. You are right. Any other body uh, can add to that? Mortal sins are like grave, grave offenses which will separate us from uh, God. Grave offenses. Yes, this is what I wanted to hear. Repeat again, please. Mortal yes. sins are the grave offenses, Father. It's like it will separate us from God. The relationship yes. between God and us. And yes, also, the second part is very important. Damnation if we don't repent of it. Okay. So what uh, that uh, that uh, um, sister who said it cuts off our relationship with God. It separates. It separates. It cuts off. It cuts off. It is like a train going together. All twelve bogies are going. Suddenly something happens. It cuts off. That's very dangerous. Yes. No, that's cut. So that is the mortal sin. Venial sin, what does it do? Some of you already said it damages the soul. So now, why I say mortal sin, venial sins are more dangerous than mortal sin for us because it uh, we can it can lead us to commit venial sins can lead us to commit mortal sin. Okay, all right. It can become like a practice, yes. Father, that we think it is okay to do and just continue. Yes, Nancy said it. Nancy said it. Can I see you, Nancy? Can I see you? Praise God. <laughs> yeah, Father. I don't want to be cut off from you now. <laughs> Praise God. She is totally Praise cut God, off. Father. Where are you, Nancy? Yeah, praise God, Father. I met you in I met you in Mumbai retreat two oh, weeks ago. Oh, you we went there. All right. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah. So thank you for telling. So uh, I'll give you an example. Okay. Somebody said I don't know. I have not exper experimented. You put a frog in a uh, hot water. It will jump out immediately. But if you put a frog in a in a, a lukewarm water, okay, a cold water, and slowly, slowly, you know, heat the water. And at first, the frog enjoys. Wow, it looks so nice, very cozy. And slowly increase the uh, flame. It becomes, it still is also warm and very nicey, very nice. And again, increase, increase, increase. Suddenly, it's, it feels, oh my God, I'm boiling here. But by the time, it was, it is too late for frog to jump out. <clears throat> that gives us a good imagery. Uh, <coughs> venial sins. Venial sins have the capacity to uh, numb our soul. It has the capacity to numb our soul. We we'll say, ah, oh, it's okay. Ah, it's okay. Today, one cigarette, let me do what is that? 
Church has not said cigarette, we are having cigarette is a sin. Oh, one rosary. Okay, today I will skip the rosary. Oh, one. So it, it multiplies layer after layer, layer after layer until you find, oh God, what's happening to me? And it will be too late to come out. Have you experienced? I have experienced that. Has anyone experienced that? Slow poisoning. Yes. I have experienced. It takes a literal kick. I'm sorry to use this word. Kick on the butt to get up again and uh, say, oh my God, I, I'm... it's like a jump, jump start. If, if when, a, when a vehicle stops moving, somebody will push, jump start. They'll just push hard. <clears throat> Sometimes I, I used to get that. Okay, one rosary, let me skip a oh, little. I Let me eat one chicken more. Uh, let me have one more cup of coffee extra. Let me have this chocolate. It works upon my flesh. And suddenly I see myself, oh God, I'm not able to get out. And that has a capacity to push us into hell forever. But while mortal sin, the moment we commit, we mortal sin, immediately we feel cut off. Oh my God, I feel so sad. I want to come back. We will run to the confession and uh, no, uh, get forgiveness. So be careful about small, small, small mortal sins. Sorry, venial sins. So our God, our church, never, never gets tired of uh, you know, forgiving. Each time forgiveness is given by the sacrament of reconciliation, you are becoming a totally a new person, which no other religion, no other denomination has got. In confession, you are forgiven 100%. 100% you are forgiven. That is the beauty of the sacrament of reconciliation. That's the third message I'm trying to tell you. Um, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Never quit. You never say, my life is gone. Even at 90 years, 90 years, you can still be like a young baby, young teenager, even if you're 90 years old. Most of us are young people. <laughs> okay? So that's the third message. Then another message, keep yourself hot. It's like a hot pot. Okay. This I think I told you earlier also. A hot pot with a hot rice in the pot will can never attract any insects coming inside. Because boiling hot. Okay, it's boiling hot. But if they leave the uh, pot, boil a hot uh, pot with rice, just leave it to get cold, not to be cold. Leave it, leave it. Once the rice is cold and unattended, it is not, it's not covered. What happens to the pot? What will it attract? What is going to attract? Flies. Flies. Lizards, cockroaches, all types of things will come and attack. Mosquitoes, flies. <coughs> but if the hot is paw, if the pot is hot, nothing is going to come. They will be scared. So, my dear friends, our our heart, our heart, our body is like a, a pot containing <coughs> containing God's goodness. Keep always with the power, with the spiritual spiritual exercises with love. Keep it always hot. Keep it always dynamic. Our life is very dynamic. Keep it always going like this night vigil. You have come to night, come come into night vigil. Keep it. This keeps your your soul. Uh, dynamic, very agile, flexible. It's like a, it's like a, our ECG, eco, eco, when you go for eco test, it keeps on, it keeps on fluctuating up and down, up and down. Don't let, let your heart become cold. Then it's very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. That's why the Lord says, uh, okay, you, you are neither cold nor hot. I'm going to spit you out in the book of Revelation. We have to keep ourselves very, very hot. 
So these are a few things which I'd like to tell you. Um, another experience, I'll conclude with a, one more experience, uh, which I personally experienced. Uh, just give me a moment. <coughs> Today, again, I want to tell you, we have a father who is an extremely generous father. Extremely generous father. I'm not telling generous father, extremely generous father. I experienced that. I am, I am not a, a saint yet. I am a sinner. But I, I know in my heart there is a place for God. For anything, I trust my father is going to give me. My father is going to give me. He, whether it's a 10 rupees or 10,000 rupees or 10 lakh, if it is a real need and I approach my father, he will give. I assure you, 100% I assure you. Okay. So I have an example today. So we had a media workshop. Um, there was no fund. There was no fund, actually. Uh, the, uh, the director was very apprehensive about you know, spending more money, more money. And each and everything you will say, you know, it is expensive, that's expensive. I said, anything, we have to give our best. Because our founder, James Alberione, who is sitting behind me, can you see him? He's our founder, blessed James Alberione. He said, for the sake of mission, give the best available resources. For the sake of uh, apostolate, use the fastest means of communication. Best means of communication. Give the best. Okay. So that was uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, vision of uh, Alberione. So that has, that has come to my mind. When it comes to, come to uh, work or mission, give the best. <laughs> Giving to the children something, don't give second-hand clothes or don't give second... No use to clothes or anything. Give the best new clothes. <laughs> okay, gone are those days when you give, uh, you know, uh, charity used clothes or used, uh, uh, you know, they are also human beings. Nobody even likes to use uh, used Bible. Somebody came the other day, want to give a gift to somebody, uh, you know, someone. First they ask, even if the used Bible, give father. When I showed the used Bible and a new Bible, that person said, Father, I'll take the new Bible. So nobody takes. It. Uh, so Father is uh, Father very extremely, extremely uh, generous. So that's what I'm saying the story. So use the best means. So we wanted we wanted to give a high tea, high tea, a tea break. So my administrator said, we'll give us tea and a good day biscuits. I said, good day biscuits, who is going to like? Uh, we have some father, sisters, and young people. Let's give something new. I said, we will not give good day biscuits. We will give <coughs> some other tasty shrewberry biscuits or some costly biscuits. Then finally, uh, after talking a little bit, someone called me. Okay? She says, she calls me as a spiritual son. And I call a spiritual mother. While conversing with her on a phone, she said, Father, I would like to give veg puffs or non veg, veg puffs or non veg puffs for all your community members. We are about 25 of us. <laughs> no? Then I told, see, we fathers are always fed too much. Please, tomorrow we are going to have a workshop. Can you <laughs> give those puffs to for our uh, participants of the workshop, the filmmaking workshop? Yes, why not? So I just became a channel for her to go there. And she asked, how many? I said, 100. 100 participants are there. So once she said, yes, she cannot take back the word. No no problem, I will do. Then I to make her pacify her. Okay, you do, you take 50%, I will take 50% of the bill. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Now program is over, puffs are gone. She has paid the full money already. She didn't think about the 50%, 50%. So what did she give? She gave nice uh, cupcakes 
and chicken samosa and veg samosa and our our participant had a very nice time during tea tea break from good day biscuit god shifted to very high tea it's a small example it can happen in your own life also absolute trust in the lord <laughs> absolute trust in the lord gives you absolute benefits absolute blessings but you need to have that trust it has happened umpteen number of times for us <clears throat> and jesus says no give give and it shall be given to you a good measure shaken running over on your lap and will be given to you you try you try give for some good give your it need not it need not be a money always it could be a time it could be a talent i went yesterday uh, to a, another district in mumbai called kalyan it's on the way between between mumbai and pune it's another main junction called kalyan so one father asked me father can you please come for mass feast day mass on september 8 i was not my god is going to take a full amount of time one and a half or two hours journey in the crowded cramping train <clears throat> no mumbai trains are known for its uh, no it's very very pathetic i said okay i will come i went celebrated mass and uh, usually when we go for mass we get a, a stipend about 1000 rupees okay for travel or so but that father you know how much he gave he gave me 3000 rupees which i was supposed to use for the tea tea and snacks but god already said prepared somebody else and that person brought <clears throat> so god will give many many blessings it not necessarily on money please don't uh, equate blessings to money that's a very bad example please don't equate Uh, blessings with the money please equate blessings with the value how god is going to bless maybe of good health maybe of good uh, uh, society good companionship with the friends in faith maybe a good uh, uh, good uh, um, environment in which you live that are also that also a blessing it's very very sad uh, to say i have plenty of money that's why i am blessed no you may be rich with money but very poor in rest all that i said richness is a spiritual blessings so with this i come to <coughs> conclusion uh, so these are the points which i i like to highlight can anyone can you all say what are the four points that i gave today so that i may also remember the first one Uh, allow Jesus to enter into you, and you will be life like life giving waters for others. Yes, living waters. We are called to be living waters, living waters. carriers of living waters. Thank you so much, Juan. Yes. What is the second lesson? <clears throat> don't expect to be perfect. Don't expect ah, to yes. get a perfect husband. Please don't expect people to be perfect. People are always going to be bad. Even your best buddy will be bad. sometimes so don't expect to be perfect don't judge somebody okay god will take it very good next or the third point do not despair do not, do not despair. despair don't despair don't quit don't quit never give up it. never give up remember that johnny and jimmy jimmy the five, they one drowned never came out but <coughs> johnny flew never give up never never give up okay and the last one keep yourself hot keep hot keep, keep yourself hot. hot oh i gave five points okay keep yourself hot always be dynamic soul should be dynamic never uh, enter into the uh, state of slothfulness it will take you drag you drag you down that's fourth point and the last point <coughs> god will bless you no matter what your best god is very good father is extremely generous extremely Amen. generous you ask him he is going to give you and mm -hmm. i said few examples of mine 
how i got you know the 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 uh, money or you know got the, the, the biscuits and peas good day god is going to get it for you if he gets you in his hand okay glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as we make it now and amen thank you so much i hope i made some kind of uh, you know uh, the points god bless you and pray for me thank you father renault god bless you father have a blessed and thank you father thank you thank you thank you father thanks beautiful beautiful session beautiful session and wonderful points we received through you father yes, so father beautiful. thank you very much thank you so much thank you father for coming the beauty is all these points i need to follow from today onwards <laughs> <laughs> preaching is easy but practicing is very very tough so we all are journeying towards perfection okay have a nice mm -hmm. day god bless you thank, thank you father thank you father thank, thank you father thank you father praise lord brand sisters let's welcome sister leela morris once again welcoming you sister leela morris for the next session God bless you, sister. Your mic is me not able to hear you. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord, brothers Thank and sisters. Can you welcoming you, me? sister? God bless you. Can you hear me? Yes, sister. Okay. So today, I um, I felt I should share with you something that I have been learning, um, especially about. our blessed mother so we've just celebrated the birthday of our mother and uh, you know sometimes we've all got different ideas maybe some of us think you know uh mary is getting too much of importance in the church have you ever thought this way no no, no. never never okay i have been through a long time where i have felt that you know uh we should give importance to jesus we should have give importance to the father the son and the holy spirit and uh, many catholics have an idea that um uh, mary should get a lot of importance and i always believed that that was a a, a faulty idea that you know we must keep mary um if i may use a particular kind of language uh, in her place okay so um you know do you see this picture which is behind me can you see one picture you can see yes. you know which picture that is sacred jesus and mary ah. jesus and mary correct so very often i would be very um apologetic about uh i would be very apologetic about the um this picture and um i would feel that you know we are giving mary and jesus equal importance something is not right so in catholic homes we have this picture and um i always felt that a good charismatic should should learn to to give more importance to jesus and less importance to mary now i thought this was a very mature thought and you know there are some catholics who don't know this and uh, so they they uh, are very devoted to mother mary i want to share with you that in the past maybe one year lots has changed in my whole attitude so i'm sure all of us know that uh, there are four dogmas what is the dogma related to mary the feast of assumption the feast of no, 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 no. what is the meaning of a dogma dogma uh, certain uh, uh, revelations from the catholic church sister which we are supposed to believe in okay so they are you're right they are beliefs that you know we are not supposed to question 
in the sense that they are already uh, well understood, they are well uh, studied, and therefore we are to believe them. Now, uh, there are many Protestants who will tell us that there are faults or something is wrong with some of these dogmas. And, uh, you know, what is their biggest question? What is their biggest uh, complaint? We worship Mary as God. No, but what is wrong with that according to them? They are solely based on the Bible, the Protestants. Ah, they will say, where is this found in the Bible? Right. And then our answer is what? What is the answer we usually give? Scratching our head, not telling anything. Or we say we find it in the church, like our Catholic church explains this. Right. Right. The church. And they say, where God. is the proof? And there's an very argument. Good. Very good. So we say, this is not found in the Bible, but the church believes it. And so we believe it. And uh, so sometimes we even point a finger somewhere in our heart and say, I wonder if the church is right or wrong. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. So good. You all are being very honest. Now, what are the four dogmas of the Catholic Church about Mary? Somebody was saying just now? Immaculate conception. Immaculate uh, conception. Means what? Uh, that uh, Mother Mary's parents, uh, uh, Anne and Joachim, they conceived her without any sin. Very good. Yeah. So the first dogma is that Mary Imagine was conceived sense. without, without original sense. sin. Okay, so that is the feast we celebrate when? Uh, yes. 8th of December. Very good. That is the time when Mary was conceived in the womb of Anna. Hmm. And the hmm. church tells us that we must believe that Mary was conceived immaculately. Hmm. She was conceived without original sin. Then, mode of the nati dogma. nativity. I you are not looking nativity. online and all and telling her. Huh? The no assumption, praise God. Uh, assumption, of assumption of a lady. Okay, assumption is little later. Uh, birth of a nativity sister, 8th of September, which we celebrated. She was uh, a virgin. Ah, okay. So, uh, the birth of Mary is has nothing to question. She is born, obviously. But the second dogma is that Mary conceived Jesus without as a virgin. Sin. And mm. she remained a virgin till the end. So the mm. perpetual virginity of Mary is the second dogma. Another dogma? Assumption. Like our sister Jessica told, no? 15th okay, August. Okay. The, the third dogma is the feast we celebrate on January 1st. Mary, mother of God. Mother of Mary, church. mother of God. So, no, don't say mother of the church. Mary, mother, mother of, of God. 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 Ah, she is called Theotokos, the God bearer, and therefore mother of God. 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 Okay, yeah. And then, of course, the feast we celebrated on uh, 15th August. August 15th. Assumption. The feast of the Assumption. Assumption. Which says Assumption. What? Which says what? Her body was heaven. taken directly into heaven. heaven. Yes. So Mary, soul. Mary was taken into heaven, yes. body and soul. 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 Uh, so we celebrate Mary, and of course, one week after that, we celebrate something else. Queenship of Mary. Very good. Queenship of Mary. Praise now, uh, these are difficult things to understand. But I want to share with you some very, very beautiful things that I have learned. And uh, I have learned that they are very much found in the scripture. So I'd like to share with you, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, these things which, which we learn are found in the scripture. Uh, it's good to share with one another so that we also can, uh, yes. can learn and grow from them, right? So... Yes. Today, I'm going to take you through some very, very beautiful passages of the scripture and some very beautiful things that I have personally learned, uh, which has changed my whole attitude towards Mother Mary. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you that, you know, in, uh, in salvation history, there are three very, very important 
uh, special moments or peak moments that there are. Okay, so listen nicely. Huh? One is the moment of creation. Okay, so creation is a very important moment in our salvation history because that is the time when uh, God created starting from nothing. What did he do? He spoke a word. And what happened? Was created. He what created, was created the world. Created, created the world. Uh, how long Everything it took? One by seven one, he created seven the world. Days. Six day days. after day? Seven, seven days. Seven days. Very good. Where six is all this days. found? Where? Yeah, Genesis. six days he rested on the seven days. Days. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Genesis. Genesis, Genesis wonderful. One. So if you look at Genesis 1 and 2, we have that Ooh. first very special moment in our creation. salvation, which is the time of creation. Okay? Creation. Uh, the second very special moment is the time of the exodus. And that is the time when mm. God uses Moses to take his people to the, Moses to, to the promised yes. land. Yeah? And then land. there is... Yes. Yeah, and in the Old Testament, there is a third moment, and that is the moment of the uh, the building of the temple. Okay, and uh, mm -hmm. that special time in which the kingdom is established above all other kingdoms. Okay, now uh, you'll be surprised that all these are very very important moments. Uh, whenever mm -hmm. we study something, we must know that the Old Testament hides or conceals many things which are going to be revealed in the, in the New, New Testament. Testament. Okay, so New Testament. Uh, if you, you remember what you said just now, you said to me that in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter one and 2, two we have what? Yeah, creation. 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 So your Bible begins with three words. What are those three words? In the beginning. In the beginning. Wonderful. So if you look at Genesis chapter 1 and, uh, you know, onwards right up to chapter 2, you will see in the beginning and God creates on day 1 the light mm. and uh, separates it from the darkness first day. Then he creates second day the sky and he separates it from uh, the rest of the earth. And on the third day, he creates all catechism teachers know, no? Light. Yeah. First day is light. Second day huh. is huh, the sky and the, he separates the rest of it. Water. Ah, water. The third day is the sea and the, the sea and land. Them. And then the land. fourth day? Sun and the moon. moon. Very good. The sun and the moon and the stars. And then on the fifth day? Creatures that live in the night sea and fly. Night. Darkness and birds. night and day. Night and day is over. Now on the fifth day, he creates the living creatures. Living and creatures. Then, and then? Plants. Then animal, sixth day, animals and animals. Animals. Man. 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 I'm listening. He, sixth day he created all the and ah, and sixth day he created man and then seventh day he he rested. 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 Very good. Very good. So right from the creation of uh, man or right from the creation of light to the creation of man, there is a story. And of course, after that, we know what happens after that also, no? What happens in Genesis yes. chapter 2? Ayo. What happens? Creation of Eve and then the fruit. Yes. So sin comes into the world. Yeah. Or say, so God gives yeah. some commandment to man and says you will not eat of the fruit eat of this tree. Fruit. And uh, the serpent comes and tempts man and, uh, and woman. Okay. So God has created man and woman and uh, sin enters the world. And then God it's makes... Disobedient. Uh, Yes, there is the disobedience of man. Now, why am I telling you all this with reference to uh, Mary? Mary? Okay, I want to tell you that 
if you are a little attentive and you check what is the beginning or what are the first words in the gospel according to St. John? In the beginning was the, the beginning word. Was the, word. Word. the beginning was the 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 word. The word was God. In the beginning. Wow. In the beginning. Does something strike a bell in, a, in your mind? The Old yes. Testament and the New Testament. Ah, Exodus. The Old Testament also, first yeah. three words in the were beginning. In, the, in, in the, the beginning. And in John's gospel, you have in the beginning. In the and beginning. Read. Yeah. Now listen, huh? very, very interesting. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, etc., etc. And then in verse 4, we are told, in him was life, and the life was, anyone's got Bible light open? Of light of the world. Something strikes like the world. Yeah. The light Jesus was created. The, Jesus is the light of the world. First day, light was created. Light now, was created. Uh, I will quickly take you through if you look at the gospel of St. John, you mm. are going to find that uh, as you read through that first chapter, yes, there are some important words. I'll just quickly mm. tell you what those words are. What does verse 29 start with? John 1, 29. John 1, 29 says, the next day, he saw the Jesus coming towards The next day, only tell me him. the next day, right? The next day. And then verse 35? 35. The next day. The next day. The next day. Verse 43? The next the day. Next day. Ah. So you know what I'm trying to show you? How many days? The beginning and then the next day. That's like we saw in Genesis chapter 1. In the Genesis 1, uh, 2, and 3. In one. John chapter 1 also that there is so, the light and then the second day and the third day and the fourth day. Fourth. Correct? And then chapter 2 begins with? On the third day. On, on the, the third, third day. Third now, day. when on we are saying day. on the third day, there was a wedding feast and so on. Four plus three? Seven. 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 What am I trying to tell you? There Seven is days. a parallel Eight. between Genesis and chapter new. one and verse two and John's gospel. John's, John's gospel. gospel. Chapter one, and, one, two. and, two. one, one and, two. and verse two. two. Yeah. So, very, very interesting and this, a lot of our Protestant friends who have come to the Catholic Church are finding out, and not that they have found out, but uh, this is the church teaching. Oh, and so, you church. know, sometimes we are so blind, we think that we know, and we think that the right answer is to say, well, it's not in the scripture. Yes, it is not literally in the scripture, but everything that the church has given us about Mama Mary is founded in the scripture. And so, just like you have in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, you have John's gospel chapter 1 and verse 2, and chapter 2 talks about the seventh day, or let's say after those four days and another three days, there was a wedding at Cana. And you know what happens at this wedding at Cana? Mary. Mary. Mary is there. Mary and we don't know anything First about... First. Yes, we don't know anything about the name of the couple. Mm. But we know that Jesus was there and Mary his mother, Mary was there. Was there. mother was there. You see? And uh, scripture scholars tell us that this passage, John's Gospel, Chapter 2, which is the beginning of Jesus' public the um, first miracle, as it were, is a, a, a very beautiful picture of the undoing of what the old Adam and Eve did mm -hmm. in Genesis mm -hmm. chapter 1 and verse 2. You know, mm -hmm. know how sin came into the world. So in John's yes. Gospel chapter 2, we have once again New Adam. Jesus, New Adam, New, Adam. Adam. New Eve. Mary, Look at what Jesus is calling Mary in verse 4. Yeah. 
Nim Woman. 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 If you remember in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, or chapter 1 and chapter 2, we have this clear understanding that there was a woman there. Who yes. was there? Eve. 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 And now we have the picture of the new Eve. Mary, Mary. is the new, the Eve. new Eve. Not because we have some jatka in our head and the church has just told us to believe this. No. If you study the scripture, you can see that, you know, there is something so beautiful when we are taught to look like this and to see that if anybody, uh, you know, uh, knows a little bit of the scripture, they are reading Genesis 1 and 2 and they are reading now John's Gospel chapter 1 and verse 2 and they are seeing this new Adam new and I will tell you something. This is why we have those two pictures by the side of each other. Mary is the new Eve. Now, don't let anybody give you any rubbish ideas that, you know, uh, this is a stupid idea because, you know, Adam and Eve were husband and wife, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now, uh, Mary and Jesus are husband and wife? Mother, no. and, mother, and, son. mother, and, son. mother and son. Mother and son. But, but listen very carefully. Mary is mystically, mystically connected to Jesus in a mystical spousal relationship because she has conceived Jesus by the power, power of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. And so this is why we give Mary the honor of being called the new Eve. You see, there is a new creation that is happening and uh, that water which changes into wine is a very deep understanding of the presence of the Holy Spirit as the new creation comes about. So I hope you've learned something uh, as I've been sharing with you. I want to take you a little further and... Uh, share with you something which for me has been very, very precious and very beautiful. I told you the second peak in our salvation history is what? Uh, the fall. Exodus, brother. Exodus. 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 Bringing the Exodus. Somebody writing. Nice, nice. Somebody writing. Moment of Exodus. 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 Wonderful. So the first peak was creation. Moment and we of are creation. Seeing, yes. Mm. Mary is there. Very responsible for a new creation and therefore we give her this title of the new Eve. Now, I want to tell you that in this context, therefore, the church has done a lot of study and the church tells us that if Mary is to be the new Eve, then Mary is sovereignly prepared by anticipated grace of Jesus himself to be the mother of special womb, the special place where Jesus will be born. And mm. that is why Mary or the church gives us this understanding. There's a lot which we can learn, but I will briefly say that is why we believe that Mary's womb was kept holy. And so Mary is not born with Original sin. Sin. Original, original, sin. Sin. original sin. This is what we celebrate when we celebrate on 8th of December, Mary's yeah. immaculate conception. conception. She was conceived not like any of us. She's a human being. So she was conceived naturally. In other words, by a marital union of uh, Anna and St. Anna and St. Joachim. Joachim. But, but she was not born with original sin. Original sin. Original sin. Original sin. Yes, so this is a very, very special thing that we need to understand. Now, I'd like to share with you something very much more uh, beautiful, I may say. Uh, I told you, uh, or we all know that Jesus is the new Moses, right? Why? Jesus is the new Adam. He's also the new Moses. Why? That in Mount Nebu, that cross is the new Moses. When he lifts up that... Uh, Lifts up that uh, sign for the 
and there is the snake and the this one no like a serpent uh, moses lamb, will lift up the snake moses was responsible for yes. that passover yes right? yeah and so uh, jesus is a new passover, passover lamb. lamb okay mm. and now i want to tell you something very very unique at least for me it has been a very very beautiful learning you know what is very special to the old testament people was the presence of god right and uh, the presence of god which is uh, which was for the old testament people symbolized in what the I'm cloud sure you know. cloud yes very good cloud something more fire fire uh fire nice but that cloud yeah. was there something over something throughout yeah. their traveling ark ark of the covenant very ark good nice nice the ark of the covenant Covenant. so if you look at exodus chapter 40 the lord spoke to moses and he talks to him about how uh the tabernacle had to be created and it had to be put in the ark of the covenant and very quickly i'm going to tell you that the ark of the covenant the whole description of how it had to be made it was made of wood acacia wood a very lasting wood but there was a gold lining and uh, in it what was there in this box three things the bread bread um Aaron's rod. Yes. Aaron's no, 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 no. There was manna. Manna, manna. manna. Bread. Manna. And there were the two Aaron's tablets. Rod. The Aaron's word of rod. God. And the ten commandments. And the law. The Very ten good. Commandments. Now, now, if you look at Exodus chapter forty and verse thirty-four, you know what we are told. It is forty. Then the cloud covered the tent. The, of the cloud covered the tent of the meeting. Of the, the glory of the, the Lord filled the tabernacle, and Moses was not able to the enter the tent of meeting because the cloud settled the upon him. Glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Yes, and I want to tell you very interesting and very beautiful that this is uh, to any uh, scripture scholar. a very clear um premonition or a very clear hidden message that there is going to be a new ark of the covenant so for a long time that ark of the covenant was hidden and then who finds it you'll know a jeremiah no no in 2 samuel yes. was chapter 6 verse 2 the ark of the covenant is found by king david mm. and then he brings it to the hill country of judea yeah. okay so you can read this in two uh, samuel chapter 6 uh, uh, verse 2 and following and so on does something strike you when you hear that the ark was found and it was brought to the hill country of judea mother mary in the presence ah, mother, mother mary. mary when she receives the message so now i told you about john's gospel chapter 1 verse 2 chapter 1 mm. and chapter 2 in luke's gospel yes no in luke's gospel chapter 1 verse uh, let me first tell you 35 the angel said to mary the holy spirit will come upon you, come upon you. the power the of the most god, god will overshadow you something strikes you cloud 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 the cloud cloud, cloud overshadow the overshadow tabernacle yes and then we are told mary received the message and she she said let it be done unto me she gives that great fiat no yes let yes. it be done yes. unto me according to your word yes. and then look at verse 39 mary set out and did yes. what to the hill country when she went with haste yes. to the judean country the hill country 
where she entered the house of Zechariah. And yes. you know what this is? Yes, the good news. Mary is yes, now yes. carrying with the bread of life. life. She's the carrying within her the new covenant. covenant. Mm. Of course, Mary is human, okay? Please don't make any mistake. Mary is receiving in advance the anticipated grace from Jesus himself for being the mother of God. This God does mysteriously because Mary, uh, God desired that a human instrument should bring forth his son. And we are told when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, what happened? The baby in the 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 womb. Baby in the in the womb. womb. If you look at 2 Samuel 6, you know what David does when he sees the Ark of the Covenant? He dances. He, does he dance. dances with joy. Mm -hmm. Can you see a parallel? Yes. 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 John the Baptist leaped Dumped. with joy leaped in the womb. womb of Elizabeth when he heard the, oh, the Ark of the Covenant has arrived. And if you look very carefully at this 2 Samuel passage, you will see David asking this question. How is it that God favors me by bringing the Ark of the Covenant to me? Why mm. is it that this has happened to me? And you see Elizabeth asking those same Elizabeth questions. Asking, how has the mother of God come? Why is come it that the mother of my mother Lord, of and Mary God's doesn't God. make any correction that, you know, I'm not mother mm. of God. Mother I'm of my mother Lord. Of God, I'm mother of the church. No, no, Mary accepts because Jesus is God. And this is why it is very scriptural that we are honoring Mary as Theotokos, the mother of God. So interesting, mm -hmm. no? We Catholics don't know. Sometimes we are not told and we just say, okay, it's not in the Bible. There's no connection. Let it be. But we, you know, we are, we are good Catholics, so we believe. No, it's not all that. The church has done lots and lots of study. And so we have this very beautiful moment. And... Uh, Elizabeth says, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my womb, the child leaped for joy. And then, of course, she says, blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken. By the way, whenever we pray the Hail Mary, we are joining with the angels when we say the words of angel Gabriel. Hail Mary, full of, full grace. of grace, the Lord is with you. And then we are joining with the saints when we say the words of Saint Elizabeth, who said, Blessed, blessed are you blessed among women. women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And yes. then we join with the church when we say, Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God. Pray for us sinners pray for us now sinners. and at the hour of our death. Okay, death. now let me quickly tell you something more uh, about this whole story. We are told that when Mary uh, lands at the house of Elizabeth, time of visitation, what does she do? She sings the praise of God. The Magnificat. Magnificat. It does exactly that if you look at 2 Samuel. As soon as the ark mm. is brought, David, David dances. Song. And he praises God. He also sings a hymn of praise. Praise. Isn't that so beautiful that if you are reading the Old Testament and you are reading the New Testament, you can see that calling Mary the Ark of the Covenant is not just some, uh, you know, uh, imaginary thing, some nice thing that we are doing. It is really very scriptural. And I want you to look uh, at this beautiful uh, passage from uh, two kings. No, one kings, no? Yeah, one kings. Okay, no, you'll find this, uh, sorry. If you look at uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel 6. Yes. Yeah, chapter 6. Read what you got there in verse 9. Yeah. David was afraid of the Lord that mm. day. He said, yeah. how can the ark of the Lord come into my care? You recognize those words? 
yes okay yes. continue so david was unwilling to take the ark of the lord into his care in the city of david instead david took it to the house of obi edom the gitit gitite get right yeah gitite listen listen for the the ark of the lord remained in the house of obed edom the gitite three months three and the lord blessed obed edom and all is household something strikes you yes elizabeth What? was pregnant was elizabeth ah, mary stayed we are told in the elizabeth. house of elizabeth elizabeth for three months three, three months. months this is not an accident Please this is God. a fulfillment Please of the, what the mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. jewish people saw you will see this again in 1 chronicles chapter 13 that whole thing is repeated that the ark remained in that house for 3 months and so when mary remained for 3 months in the home of elizabeth there is no doubt that we can clearly say very scripturally that we have understood mary is the ark new, of the new covenant, new covenant. New covenant. so Praise beautiful God. right yes. yes i was Wonderful. very very uh, enriched in my own faith and i said i want to share this with god's people because many of us catholics think that you know uh, we are just being good and we are just believing whatever the church says you know doesn't matter it's not found in the bible so what we just want to be good obedient catholics yes while we do want to be good obedient catholics the church has taken trouble before giving us any of these teachings so isn't it so amazing and so beautiful that there is the uh, the picture of the new eve the picture of the new ark of the covenant who is mary herself very scripturally uh, unfolding for us as we look at the pages of the bible uh i will quickly tell you at the end of what i said i told you there's a third moment in our salvation history and that is building of the temple the building of the temple and uh, in this building of the temple uh you have um 1 kings chapter 1 yeah. yeah and verse 33 yeah what does it say the read it 33 yeah. the king said to them take with you the servants of your lord and have my son solomon ride on my own mule and bring him down to gihan okay so you recognize yes Ma joseph took mary on okay. the donkey joseph took back. mary also jesus came riding on the donkey the donkey is back the, yes. the passover feast is too very good now i want you to go a little further to 1 kings chapter 2 and verse One 19 1 kings 2 19 yeah so bathsheba went to king you remember solomon remember bathsheba yes, yes. david um, david's among david who committed adultery with bathsheba correct so david's wife after uh, after he committed adultery adultery he was she yes. was originally the yes. wife of uriah okay now uriah. Uriah. and uh, they gave birth to uh, the first child of course died and then they gave birth to solomon, solomon. okay mm. so who is uh, bathsheba david no no of solomon who is she mother mother, mother. very good now read mother. read yeah okay so bathsheba went to king solomon to speak to him on behalf of ajo adonijah adonijah yeah. down the king rose to meet her and bowed down to her then he sat on his throne and had a throne brought for the king mother 
and ah. she sat on his so right. The, the temple has been built, and what is happening now? There is a throne for the king, but what is Solomon doing? Bowing to the mother. He Bowing is making mother. another throne, throne for the mother. His side for the queen mother. Why mother. not for his wife? Because in olden days, no sister, when the mother is alive, it's not the wife who will be given that position. No, 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 no. In the olden days, that king had 40 wives and uh, I yes. don't know so many concubines. So uh, we are told that, you know, uh, David had 360 wives. So they will get what queen for one day. Mm. But he had only one mother. So, so it was mother. an accepted. It was an accepted belief that beside the king would be the mother, the mother, the queen mother, mother. the queen mother, and so it should not be a surprise to us that we believe that Mary the was the also queen. crowned queen. as the queen, queen. mother. Queen. Yes. yes. Amen. It's not, Glory yeah, it's not, a, it's not an unspeakable beautiful, beautiful sister, beautiful. Yeah. So this throne was brought there for the king's mother. And if you read, there is so much that we can learn and so much that we can understand. Uh, I don't want to cross time, but I will tell you, if you look at Matthew's gospel, so I told you uh, John's gospel, chapter John. 1, 2, I told you Luke's gospel, chapter Luke's 1, gospel. 2. I've not mm -hmm. covered everything. But if you look at Matthew's gospel, you have got mm -hmm. the picture of, uh, you know, it starts with the genealogy. The genealogy. From mm -hmm. Abraham to David, from David to Joseph and Mary. And we are told in verse 23, look, a virgin shall conceive and bear mm -hmm. a son. And they shall name him Emmanuel, which is God with us. Fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. And Amen. so we have the prefiguration already there in the Old Testament of the Queen Mother. And we have this moment where we are ready to accept Mary as the mother Mother of God, yes, God. but also the queen of, queen of all heaven. saints, the saints. queen of oh, all God heaven, saints. queen of saints. all angels, saints. queen of all priests, queen of all prophets, queen of all patriarchs. She's human, but she's Amen. queen above all the others. Now, a quick look at that last passage, which you'll often hear on Marian feasts, and that is from Revelations chapter 11. 12. 12. Yes, 11, 19, 11. from 11, 19. Very interesting. What is 19. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 19? Yeah, the God, then God's temple in heaven was opened and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. Wow, and there were... wow, that ark of the covenant is lost, huh? The ark of the covenant, nobody knows where it is. Hmm. But John saw in heaven, heaven as the temple is open. What is there? The Ark of the Covenant. The there Ark of the Covenant. Of, of the covenant. Flashes of lightning, rumbling, rumbling, thunder, earthquake, of thunder and earthquake, and heavy hail and, and storm. And what is immediately mm -hmm. after that? A great host. That is the Ark of the Covenant. A Amen. great portent appeared in heaven. Amen. Now, I don't need to oh, translate it for you. A woman clothed, clothed, with, the sun, clothed with the sun and the moon, the moon and the moon feet, feet. feet. The 12 and stars. What is this crown of 12 stars? The tribes. 12, 12, 12 tribes. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 disciples. 12 yeah. apostles. Yeah. 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 Originally, the 12 apostles. tribes are the pillars, but the 12, the 12 crown apostles. of 12 stars are the 12 apostles. apostles. And she is giving birth to the new Adam. Adam. And therefore, you see, like we saw at the beginning of the Bible, there's another sign, another portent, the great red dragon with 
seven heads, ten horns, seven diadems, the tail swept down the earth. And later on, you will see she gives birth. Listen very well. Huh? She gives birth. And what yes, happens yes. in verse 5? She gives birth to a son, a male child. Who's to rule all the nations. But, but what happens? The child is snatched away. Ah, the child is snatched away and taken to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Why? There is a place prepared for her. So that she will be kept aside. And this is the picture of the assumption. She is taken away from this world, body and soul. If you so, look at uh, verse 14, we are told the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle. So that she could fly forth from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is nourished. So that is why the church tells us Mary. Now we don't know whether Mary died. She was not raised uh, by her own power. Jesus was raised by his own power or we may say God raised Jesus. However, Mary was raised by the father and she was raised and taken to heaven up, up body to heaven. and by the soul, soul by the angel. she was soul. immaculately soul. conceived and yeah. her body was the ark of the new covenant. That is why it is very important for us to understand this whole place of Mary and her special role in our salvation. Not taken from outside the scripture, huh? Interesting, no? So we yes, thought sometimes yes. that so many, it's not yes, in the Bible, yes. not in the Bible, let it be what to do, how sad, let's uh, hang our head and pretend that you know uh, what to do, the church may be wrong, may be right, we don't know. No, no, the church has given us this as dogma because it is well studied. It is well found out that Mary, who treasured the things she didn't understand in her heart, Mary, who was told at the moment of the um, uh, presentation in the temple, the sword will pierce your heart. She goes through yeah. all those moments of sorrow. And we are told that as Mary went through those moments of sorrow, listen to this, huh? very, very beautiful and very powerful. She, her heart broke. I'm sure any of you knows, any of you who are mothers will know what it must have been for Mary when she is there. First of all, she knows she's the mother of God. She knows she's the mother of Jesus and Jesus is God. But she is made to rush to Egypt. She is made to, uh, to go through the suffering of not understanding what was happening when her son is lost in the temple. We are told she treasured these things where? In her heart. In her, heart. In her, in her heart. immaculate heart. heart. And we are told that as the journey of Calvary goes on, Mary stands and looks at her son. That's what we celebrate in the fourth station of the cross. Mm. Mary is partaking of salvation as her heart aches and breaks for her son. And Mary walks with him to Calvary. And John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 27 tells us, there at the foot of the cross stood Mary. Amen. Mary's heart, her immaculate heart, is bleeding with pain. She suffers and this is why you will see that immaculate heart picture with swords in it, seven swords, the sorrows of Mary that she went through as she saw her son going through his agony. <clears throat> Mary, in the most unique way, has carried the bread of life in her own womb. And Jesus is carrying 
life which was given to her by the lifeblood of Mary. And so the heart of Mary has, in a sense, mysteriously given birth to that sacred heart of Jesus, our Savior. It's a mystery because Mary is human, but God has raised her. Who are we to question? God has yes. raised her and made her queen of heaven. God has raised her and made her the mother of God. God has crowned her with that honor of being the queen mother. And this is why we confidently go to Mary and we claim her intercession. You yeah. know, there are so many beautiful things in the Old Testament. You will see this Ark of the Covenant is taken round and round the Jericho wall. And there is no explanation after seven days of them doing one, one, uh, you know, round around that uh, city of Jericho, they are told, give a shout. What for? Just in obedience to God. And when they give that shout, what happens? Walls come. Walls fall. 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 That is the power of the Ark of the Covenant. And I don't need to tell you, this is why we have such great confidence in the intercessory power of Mary. As we raise the Ark of the Covenant, and we uh, walk with faith around those walls in our lives, Mary is there. Amen. Jesus, as he hung from the cross, he said, Behold your mother. your mother. And what does John do? From that moment, the scripture tells us, he took Mary as his mother. He took Mary to his own home. And I pray, my dear brothers and sisters, you have listened. There is so much of power in turning to Mary, our mother. She who gave of her own flesh. She who gave of her own substance so that Jesus would come to birth. She bore him in her womb with love beyond all telling. And when the fullness of time came, Mary brought forth Jesus. She was the first evangelist, the first one who gave Jesus to the world and who gives us that example to continually give Jesus to the world. I pray that each one of us may rise to a new level of depending upon Mary, Queen of Heaven, Queen of Mercy, Queen of Grace. She is our powerful advocate. And we want to honor Mary as the Ark of the New Covenant, Mary as the New Eve, Mary as the Queen of Heaven, assumed into Heaven for our sake, so that we may have help, human help, but special, powerful, holy help through the intercession of Mary, our mother. Let's bring our lives to the Lord. Let's bring our struggles to the Lord. I don't know what your struggles are, but I know that even as we pray, Mary will take all our petitions to her son. And Jesus will hear that cry and turn our water into wine. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen. Mother of mercy, hail our lives and our weakness and our power. Do we cry for the children of the end? Do we send up our signs in the beginning? Do we pray for the return of the Lord and the most precious and 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 most May the divine Amen. assistance always remain with us. And may the souls of the faithful the 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 Amen. Amen.
God bless you, brothers and sisters. And may we grow in our faith and in the teachings of the church, which are so rich and so powerful that, you know, the more we open ourselves to them, the more we will love our mother, the church, and the more we will love the things of God's kingdom. Okay, um, we start by covering and sealing everyone, including myself, with the precious blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come in thy holy presence, in the mighty name of Jesus. I cover and seal every person, Lord, who is listening. Let them have ears that they will open to listen to your truth and to your word. Let my words that leave my mouth be anointed by your holy word, by the blood of Jesus, so that it's sanctified and spirit-filled, that it touches people's hearts and moves in and have their being in it. We thank you, our Father, and we praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. That is not my might or my power. As your word declares, the horse, as Zechariah 4 verse 6 says, I pray that every word that leaves my mouth is only for your glory and only for you, Lord. I glorify you, Abba, in everything. I, together with my brothers and sisters, at this very moment, repent of every pride, ego, every kind of sin in the flesh that we may have committed. Our Father, every kind of sin, we forgive every enemy, Lord, because that is what your Lord declares, that your word declares. And I pray, Abba, that nothing of me, everything of you, take all of me and give me all of you, Lord, so that I, along with my brothers and sisters on this panel, are filled with your wisdom and understanding. As I speak your word, Abba, tonight, to glorify you and give you glory and you alone, Lord. Today, we speak about words. Every time we communicate with one another is nothing by words. So let us believe together that when we herald this part of our spoken word, this word will come to pass in our lives. And let us never doubt. Because when we speak God's word, it is His word that moves and has its being and changes things in the realm of the Spirit. And once it's changed in the Spirit, my brothers and sisters, in the Spirit realm, it will 100% guaranteed show up in the physical realm. It's only a matter of time that we have to persevere and wait and watch. As Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, Whatever you speak, the angels hearken to it, and it is done. We praise you and we thank you, Abba. As we herald this, you can also say this with me right now, so that we all are blessed. We herald and we remember everyone who is listening to this prayer. One very important request, my brothers and sisters, is to pray in silent tongues continuously so that our hearts are melted every kind of deceit, every kind of slander, hatred, jealousy, malice of every kind of pride be destroyed in the name of Jesus. When you confess anything and if you add in the name of Jesus, 
it is done why because the word the name of jesus has power so let us be like children as jesus always says come like little children no matter what our age is but when he says come like little children that means we are so innocent children are so innocent they do not know what are the consequences but they just do it because they are children and that's why jesus says come like little children thank you baba as we come before you like little children right now let every pride ego slander hatred jealousy malice melt away lord right now let your humility lord in us reign and as the snow comes down from heaven and does not return it to without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater this is you know we know when we speak the word is done why because the word of god says so in isaiah 55 10 and 11 so what i just spoke was 10 11 says so is my word that goes out from my mouth it will not return to me empty but it will accomplish what i desire and achieve the purpose of which i sent it send it in faith in the mighty name of jesus amen i thank you abba mm-hmm. father so the power of the spoken word or that word will come to fruit decision in jesus mighty name we thank you abba as today we are going to learn and understand the powerful words the power of the words that you have given us you know my brothers and sisters as as old as we are there are so many things we have done in life and all that we are today it is because of our words how uh, our life changes it is because of our words the very first question i have is how many of us believe that words are powerful can anyone on mute and tell me yes sister if you please yes. jesus the words are yes. powerful another question can words input our life can it impact our future any yes. area or aspect of our life yes yes it impacts any area of our life anything you speak there is an effect or you get infected or you get affected immediately instantly so many parents here on this group surely so when your child for the first time says dada or mama what happens to you very first two syllables what happens to you anyone as your all parents i'm sure all of us on this panel are parents the very first two syllables that came out of the child what happened to you at that very moment as for me i was filled with joy just to hear you were so thrilled you know that joy the joy that comes to hear those words the first two syllables that you have heard it has so much of power that it has affected your heart and there are tears of joy coming from your eyes just imagine just two words so there are there is tremendous power in words so that is something very important behind it my brothers and sisters so this thing is very clear that i know it can be constructive powerful so that we can create something out of what we speak just as god created the world that all of us know with this word so we could have negative power where we can destroy so it's very important to realize this at the very start and so today today's teaching is all about the base and understanding it just as we went school if you don't know slanting lines and sleeping lines and horizontal lines you will never know any syllable to be right to be written in school so when we started writing we were taught all these lines first in the same way 
it is very important to understand what you speak and if you if it's better you don't speak you know because if you speak it happens so there are certain scriptures that will help us obviously as we know that in genesis 1 verse 3 god said let there be light and so it was so this in the very creation that happened was with the spoken word and we know that that the creation can only take place because of the spoken word that jesus spoke when he saw darkness he didn't say oh my god there's darkness let the light come no he just didn't speak what he saw as to corinthians 4:18 says what you see is a fact what's the fact the fact is temporary and what you have not seen is the truth so when our father saw that there was darkness he didn't say he just didn't speak but we whatever we see initially we speak and so we eat the fruit of our lips and so god has made us co-creators with him he expects us to use his words to create so everything is created in the realm of the spirit you know many of us pray we uh, go to the gym you know and our uh, physic to become physically fit so we look very good from the outside and then when somebody comes and tells you oh wow you're looking so sweet 16 you're on your 60s but you say you're looking like sweet 16 what happens it affects your soul and so you start walking like a very young girl you start wearing short dresses and skirts and pants and things like that why because it affects your soul and once it affects your soul it affects your spirit as well and then what happens you start walking with the worldly spirit so today let us be very careful let us walk inward out our spirit is from god so god's spirit is my spirit so i am a spirit being so when i am a spirit being i will walk with my spirit which is god's spirit so i will not walk with the worldly spirit so that nothing will affect my soul so let us walk walk from inside out so first comes my spirit then comes my soul and then comes my body now this is in the word of god it's not my word spirit soul and body so the words that leave our mouth always enters into that realm and we will only see answered prayers because why everything that we pray as we read in as we have just uh, you know we just spoke about 55 verse 10 and 11 isaiah 55 10 and 11 it's already an answered prayer so how many of us believe that when i pray a prayer in the name of jesus it is an answered prayer how many of us believe anyone yes sir joy yeah yeah i'll tell you Yes. an answer prayer okay why because isaiah 55 10 and 11 says so so i have a question okay so i don't uh, you know uh, uh, sir can you uh, make it if i if i speak something what is negative okay if i say something will it be an answer prayer yes it will because i spoke please be a little louder even if i speak something negative is it an answer prayer thank you sister yes will thank you hello yes you are very soft yeah. very soft oh now can you hear me hello increase mic volume please or come close to the mic I can hear you. Sister. Now you can hear me. Hello. Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Please, please. Okay. So when we speak, okay, negative words, is it an answer prayer? Yes, surely it is because we spoke. Yes, yes. So this is the beauty of the prayer pattern. So when we have Christ in us. and when we are believers we are born again in the spirit so we only know one thing is that when 
I left the word from my mouth, it's answered. I don't have to question it. I don't have to see the situation. Not allowing the situation to speak to me. Why? Because I know the situation has no power over God's spoken word. Because we are just temporary. I just go to 2 Corinthians 4 AD. What the people tell you, it is temporary. But what God word, God's word tells you, it is eternal. Why? Because you can't see it in the physical. You can see it in the spiritual. So let us always keep talking God's spirit-filled words. Anytime, any situation that comes in your life, speak spirit-filled words. Why? Because you are a spirit. And so it's very important to meditate on the word of God, understand it, and apply every, uh, to every situation God's word. And definitely, surely, guaranteed, all of us are victorious. Why? Because the Spirit of God is in us, and what we speak is nothing but spirit filled words. As Proverbs 18 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Do we agree? Yes. Do we agree that we eat our yes, fruit of our own lips? So, we can speak life, we can speak death too. That means I can cause destruction in anybody's life. Maybe in my child's life, my child is always worried, but I think you know, he will never come up with life. And so he will never come up. And it will not happen instantly. It will take years. And as your child is growing and growing, you will see what you spoke then, it's manifesting now. Because that word has gone and done the thing it is sent. If we get this right in our minds, you know, and in our heart, then we can get to deeper dimensions of how to use the word. So then my question to all of you is, if we speak God's word, we see an answered prayer. But if we speak damaging and self-inflicting words, they can also affect our entire future, right? Right. Example, if uh, someone is applying for a job, okay, and he feels that he can never get a job, would he ever get a job? He's no. applying for a job. And at the same time, he thinks, you know, I don't think I'll get it. Will he get a job? No, sister. No. So, okay. So if someone is trying to diet, like many women and all, you know, they're dieting today by fasting or doing whatever method. But also say, I will never be able to lose weight. Will that person will never lose weight? The person is dieting, going to the gym, doing everything. That person, and, and the person is also saying, I don't think I'll ever lose weight. Will that person lose weight? Anyone? No. No, no. no. Because he's doing and plus he's confessing. Very important. Keep your mouth shut. That is what Mama Mary did. And that is why today she's got so many titles. She's the queen of heaven. So many titles. Because she shut her mouth. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Why? Because we are the children of the God most high. So because when you are hearing, you are also hearing and that builds up the faith in the realm. That's why now uh, Romans 4, 17 says, I think, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing. So, when you hear, basically, it allows your body to take action. See, I'll tell you one thing. How many of us know that you're born again in the spirit and not in the flesh? Are we getting this? Okay. God's spirit lies in our spirit, right? Not in the flesh. Correct? We all know, no? The spirit needed a flesh. It needed a body. And so we are. So I'll give you an example. I'm sure some of you will agree with me. You know, uh, you stop reading God's word for one week. And see how the flesh will start lusting after anything. And 
could wonder how this same person one week ago could control all this and one week later without the word in you has every kind of temptation how many of us have experienced this anyone hello yes If you read God, you stop reading God's word, okay, and you start enjoying life. What will happen? You will experience everything which is not of my kingdom of the Lord, and everything will go away. So, for example, you go for a holiday, you get busy with work, you get busy with your normal life, and have no time for the word of God. Slowly, what will happen? You depart from the word, and you realize that oh, what happened? Yet everything, all the kinds of temptations that start to come, and they start to grow in our daily life. If someone is really in the word, we'll understand what I'm trying to talk and say about. Okay, it's important, my brothers and sisters, for us to understand that life and death are at the power of our tongue. So we have to continuously, continuously speak the spoken word. So we have to be very cautious as to what we utter, what we speak. So we have to be so our mouth always gives us an expression of what we think, what we feel. Many a times, the thought that comes to us is out of the abundance of our heart. Why do I say so? Because Proverbs thirteen verse three says, "Do to guard their lips, preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come." How many of us agree with this? Again, I repeat, Proverbs thirteen verse three. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. How many of you agree? Yes, sister. Okay, crazy. Yes. So I tell you a small story. Okay, there was a salesman. And he used to sell, you know, these vacuum cleaners. And he would go from town to town uh, selling these vacuum cleaners. And uh, nobody would ever open the door. So one fine day he said, "Now I must show these people what actually I'm selling." So one day he knocks at one lady's door, and that lady she just opens the door and she peeps into it. And uh, so what does he do? He just, you know, uh, what is the door? And he enters the room forcibly. And she says, "Oh, uh, hey, what are you doing?" And so he says, "Just keep quiet and just see what I'm doing. I don't want you to say anything." And so he goes inside her house, and uh, he uh, gets out all the dark da- dark from his vacuum and throws it on the. The floor. mic is muffled. We can't hear clearly. Now, can you hear? Yes, uh, better. Make some sound, sister. Okay, so that that man goes to sell the vacuum cleaner, and uh, he forces he forces himself into one somebody's house, and uh, he tells that lady, "You don't say anything. Up. You just see what I'm doing. I don't want you to say anything." And so he uh, throws all the dirt uh, from his vacuum cleaner onto the floor, and um, and he tells that lady, "If all this dirt doesn't, uh, this vacuum cleaner doesn't vacuum all this dirt into." Uh, this machine, I will eat it with my mouth. So, and this woman was trying to tell him something, but he asked her to keep quiet. He said, "Just keep quiet. I just see what I'm doing. I don't want you to talk." And he told her to listen to him. And then the lady told him, "I just need to tell you something. Let me talk. You'll be very busy because this very town has no electricity. And so, without electricity, how will the vacuum cleaner work now?" So the same thing happens with all of us sometimes. We stop to listen to what people are telling us. We stop to listen to what God is trying to tell us. We stop to listen to what our spirit is trying to tell us. And the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to us, and we say no. We, we just just be quiet over this. But let me do what I want. What I want to do. I'm doing it on my own. Many a times we are caught eating our own words. And this is what happens when we are rash in our mouths. 
we have to know one thing my brother and sisters every idea word that you and i speak you have to give an account for it why am i saying so you think well, you know i just you know just a slip of the tongue and i didn't mean it actually you know those words are there but every idle word you have to give an account and not say so what the god said that the 1236 but i tell you that every one will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word that they have spoken so be very careful what you speak because every empty word that you have spoken you have to be given account so you know my dear brothers and sisters that i realize that this body is god's body i started just to imagine that if i speak something that is not aligned with the word of god what am i in the eyes of jesus and you know this body of mine that i have you know at today this body god had paid has paid such a big price but many of us we know but we deny it so who are we so this gate is us of the owner of the body and he is the owner of our body jesus who paid such a big price for us so am i able to do things in the flesh and you know uh, sometimes uh, some many of them get a lot of very crazy jokes on on the whatsapp and this is me what what a joke it was and you forward to somebody else what are you forwarding is it aligned with the word of god that joke what you are forwarding is also you have to give an account some of us some of our brothers and sisters especially when we drive when we are driving and somebody just crossing your mind oh god and you know all this uh, and these some of other children do and you are going to be accountable How many of us uh, at the corners of the road, at the look and corners of the road, we sit and gossip, we stand there, we say, "Oh, you know that one? He's magician." We got to pay an account for the talking. So many of times, times we share dirty songs, dirty words. You know, we share these words. See, I don't know when she said it. Just read, like, just look at, and you know, just just go through it. So many of us enjoy these dirty jokes that are popular, and we share with other people. Can we do that? No, we can't. Many a times, you know, this body of ours, we are just caretakers of this body. Who is the owner of this body? Jesus. He has paid such a big price. But today, somebody uh, sends me a, a a joke, and it's it's a filthy joke, but just full of laughter in that filth. And what do I do? I want my friend to know about this filthy laughter, and I forward it, not knowing, knowing, but I deny that I have to pay an account. So many times after mass we meet, and we say, "Oh, you know that one? Our husband knows you always drinks, and and you know this and that. What are we doing? We're gossiping. I have to pay an account. So there's an account that you and I have to give. Do not get trapped by brothers and sisters with the devil. Do not get deceived with his lies, because the words he speaks, my brothers and sisters, he's using all of us today. They are all evil, and evil always bears lies. But if we do not have The truth, that is what the word of God has given us. We have to pray for this thing. All of us have a lot of knowledge. You know? Now I just heard heard the Hail Holy Queen. My sister just finished her talk. Uh, we all decided the Hail Holy Queen. You know, be very careful. Our church has not changed. You know, it is said we are poor banished children of Eve. Are you children of Eve? Can anyone ask you? Can tell me. Are we children of Eve today? Yes. You're wrong. We are not children of Eve. Why did this thing? We came. The children. We are not children of Eve. We are not banished. We have gone back into the garden. Jesus came to give us what the devil had taken. 
are not banished. We are believers. And we believe in Jesus Christ. So we are no more poor banished children of you. We are believers. We are born again. What is born again? Born again is what? That you are a new creation now. Jesus has come and given you salvation. You are no more banished. See, you have to be very careful with your words. That means, if you are saying you are a poor banished child of God, then why Jesus died? Why did, what did he do on the cross? Drama? No. He took us back into the gun. If you are, if you say that you are a spirit being, you are right, right now, you are sitting with the, uh, at the right hand of God. You are sitting at the right hand of Abba with Jesus. Because the same spirit which is in Jesus is in you. So they are no more banished. That is the old covenant. We are in the new covenant. That's why Colossians 3 verse 9 says, no? We are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. What is that? You see, be very careful. Just don't rattle off. Understand what is given the Holy Mary. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. We are no more sinners. No, Jesus has washed all our sins with the precious blood of Jesus. You know, it's us. So it's so very important to rectify these things. You just understand, you know, uh, analyze, audit yourself and see, are you the banished child of God? No. They are born again. They are believers. They are not of the old covenant. They are of the new covenant. So why do we have older new testament? They are new. So, you know, so Proverbs 15, 23 says, what does it say? A person finds joy in giving an apt reply and how good it is for timely word. If anybody has a Bible, can open and read for themselves. Because if you see and if you read, you know, you really get an idea of what exactly the word says. Proverbs 15, 23. It says, a person finds joy in giving an apt reply and how good it is a timely word. So one good word of hope makes a big difference in the life of people who are going through depression, who are finding it difficult to cope up with their exams, with their studies. Like if you suddenly or someone comes up and tells you, you are going through a very difficult situation. And what you say, oh yeah, you know, I'm going through the same thing. Don't worry, man. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. And you go. What have you told that person? The person gets worse. And you also get worse. Are you coming out of that situation? No. Have you given what the word of God says? It says, a person finds joy in giving an apt reply and how good is a timely word. At that very moment, if you have told that girl or that woman, you know, don't worry. Jesus is there in you. He's inside you. He lives in you. The very breath that, that you're taking is His. And so all these things, you have the authority. Luke uh, uh, 10, 19. What does it say? It says, He has given you authority over everything. So you have the authority to get out the sickness from you, to get out the depression, depression from you. So the word of God, it, it finds joy. And when you give this word to that woman, and when she leaves you, you say, my God, it's so good I spoke to her. And she really lifted me up. And definitely, I'm never going to go under depression because Jesus is there. Uh, then, uh, Wilma, Wilma, can you be a little louder? You're too very soft. The word of God again says, again I repeat Proverbs 15, 23. It says, a person finds joy in giving an apt reply and how good is a timely word. Every time somebody comes your way and they ask you for, you know, they just keep telling you some bores of theirs. What will you do? Will you say, oh, it's okay. You know, all of us are subject of diabetes. You know, you take this medicine to come. That person will get the diabetes go more high. But, if you give a timely reply, a timely word at that very time, you raise that person up, give that person a word that will give that person joy, and you see the change. That person will be successful. Why? Because you spoke a word of hope into that person. You may not mean it at that very time. But the Holy Spirit will, uh, you know, convict you, convince you. And, you know, those words from your mouth will come. 
because of the working of the Holy Spirit. So your spoken word has brought change in that person's life. And truly, that person has succeeded. Why? Because you spoke that word at that very time. So we have to be very practical with God's word. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be practical. Even if you are thinking of a person who is very toxic in your life, okay? it could be anyone, your boss, your friend, your relative. So every time you think of that person, you get angry, you feel angry. You say, oh, my mother, no, not just that, every time. And so what are you doing? You're continuously talking about that person. So would there be joy in you? Definitely not. So when there is no joy in you, you start looking at your word pattern. What is coming out from your mouth? And find out who is that person who is feeling your joy. You will realize the more you talk about that person, the joy is being stuck out continuously. And actually, you know, coming out of this situation, to come out of this situation, you have to actually love and forgive that person in Jesus' name. So now what do you do? How will you get out of the situation? How will you get out of that body? And you know, that person is every time coming to your mind, you're getting angry. How will you come out of that? What will you say? Change your pattern. Change your Bless pattern. the person. Yeah, but how? You will speak. If you don't speak. Now suppose I say, uh, you know, you confess this word. And you say, by stripes and rebels, and we, by stripes and rebels. Yeah. And in your mouth on your face, huh? will it happen? No. It will not happen. If Jesus, when he, uh, when the upper father created the universe, and he said, mm -mm 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 -mm. he says, mm -mm -mm. would there be light? Definitely not. He spoke. He spoke. I'm not saying speak loudly. That breath has to come out from your mouth. That word has to leave your mouth. You know, in winter season in uh, Canada or you know these cold countries, you put your breath. Uh, on the mirror, you'll find that you know moisture comes. That means that every breath has power. So every word that comes out with that breath has power. So what will you do to come out of that situation? You will start talking, speaking good things. You'll start uh, saying, uh, thank you, Jesus, for your blessing, my uh, mother-in-law. Thank you, Jesus. I can see all good things happening now. Thank you, Jesus. She's bedridden, but I know she's walking. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing her a thousand fold. So keep thinking good of that person. Unless you speak exact reverse of that situation, you will never come out of the situation, my brothers and sisters. Never. So if you keep thinking about that person all the time, your spiritual battery is being drained out. And you will feel disappointed. And the situation keeps taking you away and away from the Word of God. That Word of God, it gives you life and hope. And these words of the devil that is keeping on showing you guilt and shame and taking you down and down and down and down. But the Word of God gives you high and high and high. So to get out of a situation that the evil has trapped you, my brothers and sisters, just be blessing, forgiving immediately. Because if you don't do that, one practical wicked thought we go deeper and deeper into the past of 20 long years back. How many of us remember what our mother was doing when we just got married? Do you remember? I used to, but not now. Because now I understand the word of God and I know that my body and just a caretaker. So I've forgotten everything now. And if it comes to mind, I tell the devil, Romans 12 verse 2. I'm not conformed, Jesus, I'm transformed. I'm not conformed, Jesus, I'm transformed. That this thing fades away. So 1 Peter 3 verse 9 says, Do not repay evil, evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with a blessing. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit what? A blessing. So remember, the word of God says what? You are inheriting a blessing. We say, no, Abraham's blessing is ours. Whatever Abraham has, you have. So, by repaying evil with evil, what do you get? Evil. So, God said what? Do not do that. 
But how many of us do? See, the VP already forget it then. After we say, now do. I have to tell that person that she is wrong. Otherwise, she'll never improve. Can you be like Mother Mary? Shut your mouth. You know, I have understood one thing. I will always use scriptures. I will I never speak anything. So everybody in my parish up to that standard with me, they say you're a walking Bible. Yes, even you are. But the problem is you're not that. The problem is with us that we don't want to change our pattern. And we also know an eye for an eye or tooth for tooth, correct? Would you actually bless your enemy? Never. We will always see that the enemy is made to understand because if I don't tell her, how will she improve? She will improve. You change your words now. So, the one who has hurt you and done something wrong, will you be able to forgive? Yes, I will. Because my Jesus showed me how to live on this planet on. He too was hurt. He too was put to shame. But he never did that. Because he was obedient to his father. Can I be obedient? Yes, we can. Why? Because his spirit is in me. So I have to imitate him. I have to imitate my creator. And I'm not here. And my son is Karvalo. Since I have come into the world and I've understood the world, I never say that I'm a daughter. I always say that I'm a daughter of the God of God. And they laugh at me. I don't care. These are maternal and paternal parents. Even I'm a parent. But I always take this child as a gift. My child, I take him as a gift. And I treasure him. And I keep sowing seeds. See, the word of God. And I, now I see the fruit bearing child of mine. All that I sowed, I can see the fruit. Be very, be very practical with your words. Be very careful with what you speak. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So when you pray daily, especially for those who have hurt you by brothers and sisters, you can say, Lord, I forgive this person. In the name of Jesus. Always say in the name of Jesus. Whatever you say, in the name of Jesus is very important. If you say something and you don't add that in the name of Jesus, it will never happen. It will be yours. You will go on and on and on. And so, you will say, I ask you to forgive him a thousand fold blessings in their finances, in their work, in their relationship. Give them alive till old age. Give them long life, Baba. So let your blessings start chasing them. And then you see. It's not possible, huh? But when you have the Holy Spirit who is in you, it is possible. That's why Jesus said, no? what is impossible for mortals is possible for me. Because he's a God of the impossible. So we all have the Holy Spirit. And he's a person. I can give you many, 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 many testimonies of us. I just speak to him and it is done. Of course, I'm waiting for the rickshaw. And everybody is waiting. Hey, rickshaw, wala, rickshaw, wala. And I just tell the Holy Spirit, I want the Rikshan to wait. And I'm going, I'm going this now. Finish the Rikshan will not be, he will jump. Finish, I'm in. Done. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, no? Do not lean on your own understanding. Trust God. Do we trust Him? No. Alti Adi, those fellows are not getting sure what I'm going to get. You yourself are not believing yourself. Because you don't know what seed you have inside. So you will start realizing that inside your heart, you are clean when you start talking like this about your enemy. She's blessed. She's highly favored. She's an enemy. She has hurt you so badly that you cannot forget. But when you start talking good about that person, tell them not bless them, this, that, that, just keep on messing. And you see, your shit should be clean. Let the other person do what he wants to do. I will not let him wrong because I am a caretaker of this body. My Jesus has paid such a heavy price. And I will not do anything that will grieve my Holy Spirit. You know, when we fight, what happens? The Holy Spirit comes out of you. And the evil spirit gets to you. And you, get, you start talking all the words of the world. So, we can understand the words that we speak. In God's word, there is victory. So, you will always keep praising the Lord. At all times. Especially when you are locked into some mood. You know, uh, suppose your, uh, your husband says, what every time you're praying, 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 praying. Now you know what is prayer. You know what's the word of God. And so every time you're saying some psalm or something, and you're cooking and everything. You know, Psalm 150, it has just a six verses. I will read it. 
praise God, praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with cymbal and dancing. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with the clash of cymbal. Praise Him with the sounding cymbal. With everything that has breath, praise the Lord. How many, are, how many of us praise the Lord in difficult situations? You see, what I'm saying, and praise the Lord. Can you see? You know, I'll give you a testimony. Um, just recently, one of my sister from my parish, she was put into jail. Okay, I heard about the jail. I never went inside the jail. I, I know other jail, Paikala uh, jail, and Romi jail, but I never went inside it. But then my sister, who was so prayerful, who knew the word of God, was inside the jail. When I got the news, I couldn't believe. I said, she, my God, what is it, Lord? Show me. Take me to that place, Lord. And via, 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 I did that working, and I got to the jail, to the prison ministry of our diocese. Okay? I went there, such a pitiful state. This woman is staying in a two-bedroom hall kitchen because there are about two crores, and she's there in the jail. Because there are personal reasons why she landed there. I want to ask that or that. And I told her, I said, you just say one thing. That, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, I gave her one scripture. I can't get it right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. And I told her, you just say this. And I'm sure next time I will see you out. She said, uh, I don't think it looks impossible. You know, they have put so much of charges on you. I said, I don't know anything. All that I know, you have the Spirit of God, and the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy your peace, and you're coming out. She said, well, no, you know, it's impossible. I said, no, it is possible. You just confess this. I am the Spirit of God, and God dwells with me. Okay? And I told her, you just keep on saying, and nothing else. And just have this. And uh, she was there for one week. She couldn't have a bath, because the bathroom was pitiful. The doors were broken. If she couldn't eat, because they were just giving, you know, vegetables with water. And that rice with one, like katuri, like one ball, it was half raw. My God. And uh, you have to pay 3,000 rupees to have a good meal. Okay. And so her purse, her mobile, everything was confiscated. Then they put her in that jail at Baikala, the women cell. And so she didn't know that she was 3,000. Once she got over there, she had to pay the 3,000. But she couldn't pay because everything was sent home. So all that meal she had to eat. And then when she came out on bail, the way she hugged and we cried and I thanked the Lord that, you know, Shadaf Masad Abednego, that flame of fire that set her free with the word of God. So I told her, you, and she was just praising and thanking the Lord, just praising and thanking the Lord. She doesn't know, uh, she's a Hindu convert. She just went on praising and that scripture she went on saying. And she was set free. How? What was there in her mind? Just the praise. It is so good to praise the Lord. So some, when you're cooking, you're cleaning, just keep praising and praying tongues. Your work is done. So in the morning, when we get up, my brother and sister, what do we say suddenly? Oh, you know, today, like, if I'm working, today, you know, I'm going to have a uh, very bad day. Now the day has not begun and you're talking like that. Because there's so much a bad day. I don't think I'll get time to pray today. I don't think I'll be able to give one to Zoom. What are you, what are you saying? You're saying things that are Harmful. So let me tell you, my brother and sister, you have to be, you have to have innocent words like this, okay? Harmless words, harmless. They should not harm you. So as the day passes by, what will you say? 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. You know, it has to be aligned with the word of God, your words. So it's very important that we realize any thought that comes from the devil, we will take it captive. So we have to audit ourselves and get out the powerful God's word. As Proverbs 15, verse 4 says, The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Again, I repeat, the soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. It's so very true. Even Proverbs 12, verse 14, from the fruit of their lips, 
people are filled with good things and the work of your hands bring them reward every time a brother sisters be aligned with the word of god whatever you speak whatever you do whatever you think any wicked thoughts come into your mind evil plans come into your uh, mind in your thoughts in your words your harmful words efficient for the divine thank you jesus and uh, i'm no more speaking any harmful words but i'm speaking uh, speaking helpful words for you edify start learning the word of god my brother sisters start meditating and apply every to every given situation the word of god and you see surely we are all victorious men and women in christ thank you jesus thank you holy spirit i'm sure all my brothers and sisters you have understood the very base of our life is our words from the moment the uh, you know the windows of your body that is your uh, eyes when they are open till they close in the night till that time you be very careful with your words your very words will show the pattern of your life your very words will show you how bodily spiritually fit you are so let us walk from inside out spirit soul and body so if your spirit is not infected your soul will never be infected and if your soul is not infected your body also will never be infected so if anybody says i have diabetes you're walking from outside inside you're saying i have diabetes it's affecting your soul if it's affecting your soul it's affecting your spirit you have a evil spirit then all the time you're checking on those uh, machines what is the thing of your diabetes what is the thing of your pressure because you're walking from outside in to be spirit filled because you are a spirit we don't have a spirit we are spirit how many of us know do we have a spirit or are we spirits can anyone on youth and tell me do you have a spirit or are you a spirit anyone uh can you uh, different uh, can you uh, tell me the difference between soul and spirit yeah. what is no. soul and what, what is, is spirit a soul is a motion of all your emotions you know your thinking whatever you think it comes into your soul and spirit is spirit spirit is you will always be joyful okay i'll give you a testimony of mine you know uh, i i i go for walks in the garden so as i was taking a walk something entered my eye you know just a uh, foreign body and then when i was walking and i came home it turned red and so i put the uh, water and splash water next morning when i got up it became black shot red and it became very small and i had to say what happened i said i also don't know suddenly then it took it come on let's go to the doctor and i told the devil you come for my eye you are no more in me because i am the body of christ you cannot live in me you cannot mean you cannot that be obedient to my husband i went with him to the doctor the doctor said oh my god you have to go and do an operation you know these then all the time to take that talk and i told the devil i cannot hear what he's talking but i can hear the word of god i am the body of christ you have no place in me and she told my husband uh, you know uh, you come for operation tomorrow and give me a date the bottle at 10 o'clock obedience jesus was obedient to his father obedience i said obedience the whole night i was on with him and the body of Christ said in sickness said you have no place in me all night so the rosary beads i went on next morning 9:45 we were at the center uh, 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 will ma'am sorry to interrupt you it's uh, past 2 o'clock oh okay i just so, yeah really so, sorry I spoke, yeah. i spoke the word of god and it didn't help i didn't go for an operation i got my money back and my eye was not so it all depends on what you speak okay the words are very important my brothers and sisters okay thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you sister for giving me this opportunity praise jesus so you know your talk was very good but, but can we have a recording